to two projects. In this video, we are going to explain the project Diagnosis of Malaria using Double Hidden Layer Extreme Learning Machine Algorithm with CNN Feature Extraction and Parasite Inflator. Introduction Malaria remains a significant global health threat causing hundreds of thousands of deaths annually and affecting millions. Urgent action is needed to address this crisis. This project addresses the critical need for swift and accurate malaria diagnosis. By leveraging machine learning and deep learning, it introduces an innovative system for enhanced detection using red blood cell RBC images. Traditional diagnostic methods such as microscopy are time-consuming and costly. In resource-constrained regions, prompt admission to care is hindered. This project aims to formulate a quick, accurate and cost-effective diagnostic system to overcome these challenges. And the primary beneficiaries include individuals at risk of malaria, especially in underdeveloped regions. The project's outcome promises timely and precise diagnosis contributing to improved healthcare, reduced mortality and enhanced overall public health outcomes. Object of the project so the aim is to develop an innovative system leveraging computer vision and machine learning to enhance the accuracy and efficiency of malaria diagnosis from red blood cell RBC images. So the project focuses on early detection of malaria parasites contributing to timely medical intervention and potentially saving lives. And we implement advanced image processing techniques to improve the quality and interpretability of RBC images for more accurate feature extraction. The aim is to utilize a lightweight convolutional neural network CNN to extract relevant features from pre-processed RBC images, enhancing the model's ability to distinguish between infected and uninfected cells. And another objective is to introduce and implement the double hidden layer extreme learning machine that is DELM for efficient and effective disease classification, reducing training complexity and enhancing overall model performance. Requirements needed to execute this project are Software requirements Software used is Anaconda Primary language used is Python Frontend framework used is Flask Backend framework used is Jupyter Notebook and database used is SQLite and frontend technologies used are HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap 4. Hardware requirements needed are Operating system of Windows Processor of i5 and above RAM of 8GB and above Hard disk of 25GB and above Now we'll discuss the working modules of law of work. The first step is importing required packages. In this step, we will import essential libraries such as NumPy and Pandas for data manipulation and analysis, SKLearn for machine learning and data pre-processing, Matplotlib and C1 for data visualization, TensorFlow Keras for deep learning. The second step is exploring the dataset. In this step, we investigate the malaria cell images dataset to understand its structure, features and distribution of data. This step is crucial for making informed decisions during pre-processing. The third step is image processing. Here, we employ image data generator for deep learning models applying transformations like image resizing, shear transformation, zooming, horizontal flip and reshaping to enhance model robustness. And we extract features for machine learning models by reading and pre-processing images. Tasks include resizing, color conversion, appending images and labels, converting to NumPy format and label encoding. The next step is train and test split. So in this step we segregate the dataset into training and testing subsets. The training subset is used for model learning while the testing subset evaluates the model's performance on new data. The next step is training and building the model. So in this step we implement a variety of machine learning and deep learning models including popular architectures like LXNet, VGG16 and ResNet50. We train these models on the prepared dataset for malaria detection. And in the next step that is extension phase, we combine predictions from multiple individual models to create a more robust and accurate final prediction. This ensemble approach leverages the strengths of each model for improved performance. And additionally, a user-friendly Flask-based frontend with authentication was developed. The next step is Flask framework with SQLite for sign-up and sign-in. 
In this step, we integrate user registration and login functionalities into the Flask framework. Users can sign up by providing their information and subsequently they can securely log in using their credentials. This enhances system security and allows for personalized user experiences. So, after signing in, users provide input through the front-end interface. The input data is pre-processed to prepare it for prediction by the trained models. This pre-processing step ensures that user-provided data is in a suitable format for the models. The pre-processed user input is fed into the trained models for prediction. The best performing model is selected to make predictions based on the input data. And the predicted outcome is displayed through the front-end interface, allowing the user to view the results of the model's predictions or analysis. Now we'll understand about the algorithms used. The first algorithm built is LXNet. So LXNet is a deep CNN architecture that played a pivotal role in the success of deep learning. It comprises multiple convolutional and fully connected layers using techniques like dropout and ReLU activation. LXNet is employed as a baseline CNN architecture for malaria detection. Its ability to capture complex patterns in images contribute to accurate classification. The second algorithm built is VGG16. So VGG16 is another deep CNN architecture known for its simplicity. It consists of several convolutional layers with small 3x3 filters and max pooling layers. VGG16 is an alternative CNN architecture for feature extraction. Its simplicity makes it computationally efficient for this project. The third algorithm used is Exception. So, Exception is a deep learning architecture that extends the idea of separable convolutions. It aims to capture more complex features in data, and Exception provides enhanced feature extraction capabilities, making it suitable for intricate patterns in RBC images. The next one is ResNet 50. So, ResNet 50 introduces residual connections, allowing the training of very deep networks. It mitigates the vanishing gradient problem. And ResNet 50 captures intricate features in RBC images and its ability to handle deep architectures may be beneficial for more complex feature hierarchies. The next one is DenseNet. So DenseNet connects each layer to every other layer in a feed-forward fashion. It encourages feature reuse and enhances gradient flow. DenseNet is useful for capturing fine-grained features in RBC images. Its connectivity pattern can help in better feature propagation. The next algorithm built is CNN that is Convolutional Neural Network. So CNNs are a class of deep neural networks particularly effective in image recognition and processing. They use convolutional layers to automatically and adaptively learn spatial hierarchies of features from input images. And CNNs are well suited for image classification tasks making them a natural choice for extracting features from red blood cell that is RBC images. And they can learn hierarchical representations of image features, helping distinguish between infected and uninfected cells. The next one is logistic regression. So logistic regression is a simple linear model suitable for binary classification tasks. It models the probability of a class. And logistic regression is less complex but can still be effective in binary classification tasks. The next algorithm built is decision tree. So decision trees recursively split the data based on features. While random forest is an ensemble method that builds multiple decision trees and merges their predictions. So decision trees and random forest are useful for feature importance analysis. They identify key features in the diagnosis process. The next algorithm built is support vector machine that is SVM. So SVM is a supervised machine learning algorithm used for classification and regression. It finds a hyperplane that best separates classes. SVM is applied to classify RBC images and it is effective in the high dimensional spaces and can handle complex decision boundaries. The next one is KNN that is K-nearest neighbors. KNN is a non-parametric lazy learning algorithm that classifies data points based on the majority class among their K-nearest neighbors. KNN is used for its simplicity and effectiveness in classification tasks. The next algorithm used is ELM that is Extreme Learning Machine with one hidden layer. So Extreme Learning Machine is a neural network with a single hidden layer. Unlike traditional neural networks, ELM's hidden layer weights are assigned randomly, eliminating the need for iterative tuning. This randomness reduces training complexity, making ELM efficient for feature learning in image data. 
It excels in capturing essential patterns for classification tasks. And the last algorithm used is ELM that is extreme learning machine with two hidden layers. So ELM with two hidden layers is an extension that introduces an additional layer for feature learning. This enhancement allows the model to capture more intricate patterns in image data. The two hidden layers provide increased capacity for representation learning, making it suitable for tasks where complex and multi-level features contribute to effective classification. Comparison graphs. So this is the horizontal bar graph comparing accuracies of different algorithms. In this graph on x-axis I have accuracy scores and on y-axis I have algorithm names. So accuracy measures the overall correctness of predictions showing the percentage of correctly classified instances. This is precision score comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis I have precision scores and on y-axis I have algorithm names. So precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions indicating how many predicted positives were actually correct. This is recall comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis I have recall scores and on y-axis I have algorithm names. So recall measures the ability to identify all relevant instances showing how many actual positives were correctly predicted. And this is f-score comparison graph. In this graph on x-axis I have f-scores and on y-axis I have algorithm names. So f-score combines precision and recall into a single metric balancing accuracy and completeness in predictions. So the algorithm which is best performing in all the performance metrics will be used for predictions. Execution of the project. To execute this project first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files. So this is archive folder in which I have images of red blood cell. So on these images we will train the machine learning models. So this is the parasitized images folder in which I have parasitized images of red blood cells. And this is uninfected RBC images folder. So using these images we will train the machine learning models. And this is static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript and Bootstrap. This is templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, etc. which represent different pages of the website. This is test images folder in which I have these images on which we will make the classifications. And this is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to frontend logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML pages. And these are model files which contain algorithm information. These files will be loaded into the project code during runtime. This is notebook.ipbindb file. This is a Jupyter notebook file which contains a combination of code, graphs and outputs all in one place. It allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. And this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. So now copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. I'm copying it. Open anaconda prompt. So use the command cd followed by a space and paste the copied path and hit the enter button. So this command is used to change the current directory to the code folders path. Now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py and typing python space app.py and hit the enter button. So this command will execute the python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. So after running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address localhost and port unless configured differently. Now copy the local link provided by the framework. I'm copying it and paste it into any web browser. I prefer Chrome. After pasting it, hit the enter button. So the home page of the project has been displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. So here we can see a sign up link. Click on it. So if we are new users, we have to register first. Fill in all these details and click on register button to sign up. And if we already have an account, we can directly click on this link to log in. So as I already have an account, I'm clicking on this link. 
So here we have to provide our credentials, username and password. And click on login button. So it has redirected us to the detection page. So here we have to upload the RCV image. Click on choose file button. So from test images folder, I'm selecting this image and click on open. So the image is loaded. Now click on upload button. It will take some time to load. So here we can see the predictions. This is the uploaded image and for this image it has predicted it as parasitized. Now click on home link. We will try giving another image. Click on choose file button. So this time I am selecting this image and click on open. So the image is loaded. Now click on upload button. So this is the uploaded image and the prediction is uninfected. Click on home link. Click on choose file button. So this time I am giving this image and click on open. So the image is loaded. Now click on upload button. So this is the uploaded image and the prediction is parasitized. So similarly we can upload any RCB image and can get the detections. Now click on sign out link. So the conclusion here is. Leveraging a broad spectrum, the project employed deep neural networks like LXNet, VGG16, Exception and traditional machine learning models like Logistic Regression, Decision Freeze, Random Forest, SVM, KNN and boosted accuracy using voting classifier and diverse ELM adaptations. Through an extension ensemble strategy, merging predictions from diverse models significantly elevated accuracy and resilience. This amalgamation utilized trends addressing weaknesses for more dependable predictions. Implementation of a user-friendly flask print and ensured a seamless user experience. Featuring user authentication, it provided a secure and personalized environment for input, processing and result visualization. And utilizing image data generator for deep learning and traditional feature extraction for machine learning showcased adaptability. This flexible approach addressed distinct algorithmic needs, optimizing data processing for varied model architectures. And demonstrating real-world utility, the project showcased diverse machine learning and deep learning techniques in malaria diagnosis through a user interface. The robust hybrid model holds promise for effective disease detection in practical scenarios. Thank you for watching video. For more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in For updates on latest project videos, please visit True Projects YouTube channel and subscribe.